afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I'm Lin Hui. Uh, today, Julian and I we will introduce our recent talk, uh, recent work, Magpie Bridge, a general approach to integrating static analysis into IDs and editors. Okay. I just. Uh, this paper was written during my uh, research visit at IBM Research. Many thanks to Julian and also my advisor Eric Borden. Um, yeah, in academia, we uh, have produced a lot of program analysis tools. For example, we have PMD, we have Fanbox, Lint, which detect common program flaws. And we have also Joanna, Cognicrypt, FlowDroid, DroidSafe, which detect security vulnerabilities. And we also have ThreadSafe, Parallel Checker, which detect uh, concurrency issues. So many of these tools claim that they can assist uh, developers in writing better code. However, most of them, they are produced in academia and they stay in academia. So the question is how to achieve actually the broad, broad and lasting adoption of these tools, especially the adoption among real software developers. To answer this question, the first thing that we need to actually figure out is what developers really need from program analysis. Chris Takis and Bert, they did a survey in 2016. They surveyed more than 300 uh, Microsoft developers. They found out that actually most developers prefer to have the analysis result to be shown in their editors. So their result tells us, if you want developers to use your analysis, you should integrate it into their code editors. However, the tools produced in academia don't, usually don't meet the need of developers. FlowDroid, for example, is a very famous time analysis tool which detects the data leaks in Android apps. The results of FlowDroid are written in XML form. It is not so understandable, especially for people such as uh, developers who, has, who probably has little knowledge about time analysis when we look at this result, they probably will think, okay, what is actually source, what is actually sync, what is actually access pass? Moreover, since this, this code written in this result are not even in Java, but in Jimper, an intermediate representation which is used by analysis, there's no way for developers to map this result back in the source code and try to fix the issue. And there are also some better approach which actually integrated their analysis into IDs in form of plugins. Coconicurve, for example, is a static analyzer which assists developer in uh, using the Java crypto API more securely. It assists developers in two ways. First, it generates secure code for crypto tasks. Second, it detects crypto misuses in the existing code. Here you see that it detects a misuse of the signature API. It shows the, a list of errors in the problem view in Eclipse. And when you hover over the problem code, it shows a hover message. And in this message, it tells you what is the issue. There is an un unexpected call. And it also tells you how to fix it. And we have also Cheetah. It is a static ana analysis tool which based on the novel concept of just-in-time static analysis. Cheetah divided the analysis into different layers. It discovers and reports the most relevant result to the developer at first, and then it computes incrementally more complex result later. So it shows the result in different views. Below you see the overview, which shows a list of the warnings. On the right side, it shows the, the detail of a selected, uh, a selected warning, uh, the trace of the selected warning, and also the trace is highlighted the orange in the editor. So this is, for example, a very good example how actually we can make this our analysis more useful. And there are more such examples. Here in the table, you, you see more tools integrated into different IDEs. The popular one, for example, PMD, FindBox, and SonarLint, you may all have heard about it. You, you may notice here, they are all integrated into multiple IDEs. And however, 
Here in this list, most of the tools, they only have Eclipse plugin. The question is, is one Eclipse plugin actually enough? Nowadays, developers, they have so many uh, choices in which IDE or editor they would like to code. So as you can see from this recent Stack Overflow uh, uh, developer survey, yeah, Eclipse is still on the top 10 list. However, it is not most popular development tool anymore. Instead, the market is actually shared by multiple IDEs, such as Visual Studio, IntelliJ, Android Studio, and editors such as Visual Studio Code, Vim, Sublime Text, and so on. So what we can learn from here is that if you want actually developers to use your analysis tool, only integrate it into one IDE is not enough. You have to do more. Traditionally, two integration, uh, it is done by a plugin for each IDE. So one plugin for Eclipse, one plugin for IntelliJ, one for Visual Studio Code, and so on. So obviously, there's a lot of repeated work here since all the plugin for one analysis should actually work similarly in different IDEs. And you have to do this for each analysis. So I assume we have M analysis and N IDE, and we would like to have all these analysis integrated into all these IDEs. This means that we need to write M times N plugins. This is the so-called M times N complexity problem. And besides this repeated work, writing plugin is actually not so easy because different IDEs have different UI workflow and APIs, and knowledge in this you need for writing such plugins. So usually we as researchers and analysis experts, we are actually not familiar with doing this. Besides that, writing plugins is actually expensive. Here you see that the, the cost of writing Eclipse plugin, for example. For all of this listed tool, the code written for plugin is at least 10% of the code for writing the analysis. Yeah, for some of the tools such as Cognicurb and SPL Lift, you see that the plugin even have much more code than the analysis itself. So ideally, we would like to have a magic box which adapts any analysis to any editor and present analysis result in the editor. So here we mainly consider the analysis built on the famous analysis framework, Wala, Suit, and Dupe in our paper. This magic box should provide first a communication, uh, a common communication protocol between any analysis and any editor. And the second, it should handle all the work required for good ed uh, editor support. And in this way, we can reduce M times N complexity to M plus M. So what should actually the protocol look like? In Magpie Bridge, instead of defining a new uh, protocol by ourselves, we leverage the uh, the popular language server protocol, since it already covers most of the features you need for a very good tool support. So the language server protocol, in short SP, is a standard protocol which is used between a lang a editor and a language server, which provides a common set of IDE features such as gene test highlighting, autocomplete, diagnostic, quick fix, and so on. So traditionally, this work has to be also repeated for every IDE whenever a new programming language is invented. However, nowadays with SP, the language provider only need to write a language server and it will work for every editor which supports SP. And most editors, they do nowadays. So as I said, uh, as I said we leverage SP. So the idea is that we created a Magpie server which allows analysis to run. And the analysis running on this Magpie server should just uh, produce analysis result which can be easily transformed into SP notifications. This is the only requirement and the rest will be handled by the Magpie server. However, there are some challenges by using SP. 
Here on the right side, UCISP notification, which represents a quick fix provided by the analysis. It tells editor that at which source code position where the old code is should be repaired by, uh, should be replaced by the repair code. So this means to use SP, you need actually very precise source code information. However, the analysis based on the famous frameworks are not performed on source code, but on intermediate representations. So this means this IRs, they need to preserve very good source code information. And this information can only obtain from source code front end of this analysis frameworks. So let's look at the analysis frameworks. Voila, it has multiple source code front ends and it preserves the source code information very well. And suit, it has a very solid bytecode front end. However, its source code front end is outdated. And doop, it leverage both Voila and Suze code front end and, they, uh, and it preserves their source code information. So as I said, uh, since Voila's IR preserves the source code information very well, so Voila-based analysis can produce analysis results which we can really easily transform into ASP notification. And for suit-based analysis, we separate the class loading into two parts. So we, we separate it to source code and library code. So we use, for the source code part, we use Wala's Java source code front end to pass the source code. And then we wrote an uh, IR converter, which converted Wala IR into Jimpo, which is a suit IR. And for the library code, it is then uh, passed by the original sort by, uh, suit bytecode front end. And in this way, we get a merged IR and we perform analysis on this merged IR. For dupe, it should work similarly. So I have introduced you the main idea of Magpie Bridge. As next, Julian will show you a few integration we have done with Magpie Bridge for different analysis according, uh, across multiple languages. Thank you. So the, the point of this work is to show how we can support a very wide range of IDEs and analyses. So we are going to try to rush through four different demonstrations as quickly as possible. So in this case, this is CogniCrypt, which if you were at Panathon on Monday, you would have seen the CogniCrypt, and in fact, you would have even seen this exact code example. So we're going to, and we have that. So if you look here, this is the analysis. And if you look and you can see the, there's an error. The first parameter's wrong. The value is 512. We want something else. It should be larger. And then it just gives you very uh, code actions. And one of them is it will replace 512 with 2048, which is the correct value. And there. Then when you do that, then you save the file and it gets reanalyzed. And the analysis takes a moment, but most, two of the errors have gone away. And if you remember, from the Panathon, we have, there was the same error. Some of the diagnostics and the messages look similar. How, and that's kind of the point. This is a generic framework that is using, the mag, using Magpie Bridge to bridge CogniCrypt to any IDE. This particular one is sublime text. It works in many others. But it looks not so different than the one that was custom created for Eclipse specifically as part of CogniCrypt. But, so that's, so we can, we can mimic that, but that's only one part of what's going on. The next one here is FlowDroid, which is a taint analysis system, and this is in Visual Studio Code, just throw another IDE in there for the sake of it. And you can see here there's an error message, which is a tainted flow from a, get per, a re request dot get parameter to a database access execution. So this is the, how a user would put uh, source text into, a, into the database. And again, you can see the flow, you can see the, uh, the, the trace there. Now, if you look back, this is actually a similar message, the same message, I think, to that XML file you saw earlier. So you can imagine that something like this is probably a little bit easier for a typical developer to use than that XML file. And again, there's nothing, this is Magpie Bridge doing the work. All you have, it's the same flow droid, the same analysis, the same result using the source code mapping that Lingui described 
to actually create this in, in Visual Studio Code, and which is one of them we have examples in, in many other IDEs as well. So that's multiple analyses now and multiple IDEs. But that's not all it does. In addition to that, there are multiple languages as well. In particular, this is JavaScript. This is another taint analysis. Actually, it's giving you a tainted flow from, in this case, document.url to document.write. Um, that's, so it's very similar to what Flowdart is doing, except of course it's for JavaScript. And this is in, and again, this is, this is also, this is in Microsoft Monica, but you can see it's in the, similarly, the errors are highlighted in red, and the rest of the tainted flow is actually showed there in, shown there in green. And you can see a series of, uh, you can see this, you can see that the flow as well. And the, this is the same basic idea, but again, it, this is in JavaScript. And so now we're doing JavaScript as well as Java, and this is now Microsoft Monaco as well. But that's, that's not all you can do. In addition to JavaScript, recently, especially with the boom in machine learning, Python has become a huge deal, and Walla has just Walla has jumped on the hype curve and riding it with, with analyzing Python. And so here you can see it's similarly in Monaco. Now this is, uh, it's what it's replacing there, it's replacing a particular variable. So this is what doing a rather idiosyncratic analysis. It's looking at tenses, which are a common data structure in um, machine learning code. And it looked, and what it, we did enough analysis to observe that that particular tensor it was actually passing the wrong type, the wrong shape of tensor to an API call. And not only that, it had enough code, it had enough analysis to figure out what the right fix to the code was and actually generate the quick fix for you. So now you've seen three languages, multiple IDEs, not long trace, trace, concept traces through taint analysis in, in multiple languages and quick fixes that are both what Cognicrypt does and what a more specialized thing with tensors, all done with the same basic Magpie bridge infrastructure and existing analyses. None of these analyses were written for these demos. These were all things that existed before. So let's go. What, so let's just try to summarize. The Magpie bridge is basically giving you the ability to do all of these things via LSP with relatively little work on your part. In addition to the one thing you may have noticed, although if you've got CogniCrypt and also at uh, Flowdroid. They're doing whole program analysis, and you were seeing a single file. Magpy, the Magpy bridge will fi helps you find the code and give you project, if you have a project, for example, in Maven. And all you need to do is implement these two in, in interfaces, the server analysis, which helps run the code, and then it generates a series of these analysis results that has generated the kinds of displays that you saw. And with that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I see a question here. Okay. So, with any sort of cross-compatible system in any environment, there's always sort of the issue of, of we support the least common features across all of the, the various environments we support. Now, obviously, yes. I'm not going to say do you do that? You can't do better than that. That's just a natural thing about the environment. But this is, some systems provide a way around that by letting you through the abstraction layer. So how, like, is, are there ways through the abstraction layer if you said, I can do this well enough on all systems, but actually I know Eclipse can give me this kind of UI and I can present this and I can do this a little bit better. Is there sort of a, a way of preferring one, I suppose? I mean, yeah, as P, it supports a common set of features. And there are uh, definitely some customer features which plugin can provide, but SP cannot provide because SP, the, the aim of SP is that they don't want to change the, uh, the appearance of ID. For example, they cannot add a button it, uh, to it. But is it actually necessary to have a button to run your analysis when you change the code and you save the file? And, and with SP, you can actually inform the analysis based on these UI actions. So I think it works actually, it fits actually better into the workflow of developers. So they, 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 they found some error and they fixed it and they save it and the analysis will be run asynchronous in the background and they can just uh, perform their, their job, just go on programming. 
So I, I don't think that, for maybe for some use cases that it is necessary to have some customized uh, features, but I think with Magpie Bridge, with SP, this is a more natural way how you, how you encourage developer to use your analysis. And do keep in mind that LSP was the originally, uh, LSP was originally comes out of Microsoft. It was actually how Microsoft Visual Studio Code integrates everything. It does all its analyses that way. As a result, it supports a pretty wide range of features. And the other thing to keep in mind is as soon as you put yourself, you say, I want to do this particular feature of this particular IDE, think back to that slide with the, the market distribution of IDEs. As soon as you do that, you've made sure that almost nobody will use your tool. Yes? Uh, that's a very beautiful tool and very well answers the problem you asked. But um, one feature that I feel uh, you might need and we need in our tool mm -hmm. is trace visualization. You have a lot of tools that produce traces that are an issue. And I mean, if I understand correctly, you, the taint analysis produces traces that are problematic and the tool we use produces logs files that have a billion, million lines of, of code that are unreadable, same as the XML files. And do you intend of, on, I mean, can you, is your project a good base to explore having, for example, uh, trace visualization or any other kind of visualization directly into IDEs? Maybe, I, I know LSP cannot do that, but maybe you can find a way to do something like that in every ID, finding a way of unifying the visualization of, of traces or, I don't know, call graphs or anything into the, the IDs. Things like, things like traces, you saw multiple examples of traces being displayed in the IDE. Currently what we are trying to do is we are trying to take the sort of things that IDEs commonly do now and make it portable, make it general. Now, if you want to, if you, if you have a trace, you can generate, we have pretty generic machinery for displaying traces. Um, if you wanted to, to say display a call graph, that is not something that most IDEs actually support. Certainly something like Sublime Text has no idea what a call graph is. You could, but one could certainly come up with ways of pushing that to uh, some form of, some form of um, inter interface that the IDE does support. Maybe I, uh, it wasn't very clear, but what I meant is you can write the, the traces in forms of text, but can you have uh, visualization in terms of um, images like prints? You, you mean the notes, note graph? Uh, yeah, graph, something like for that. example, VS Code has web views. Every Electron ID has web views, but uh, I know Sublime Text has something similar. I know Eclipse can also print uh, graphical uh, objects. In, in, in. So uh, th there is a, a feature which is supported by SP is called uh, execute command. So basically you can execute some command on the project based on your analysis and create some graph and just ask the IDE, for example, to open this, this file. Yeah, That's, for example, a feature that is, uh, can be exploited. And also, ASP is a moving target. So it is open yeah. source. And all these um, popular IDEs, they have ASP support plugin. You can extend it yourself if you need more features. This right. is the good thing about open source project. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. Okay. Thank so you. Let's thank the speakers again.